All right, so here's a little bit of what I've been working on illustrating. So as you can see here, people log in with their Gmail account. And then the step two is we visualize their network data. So here is, again, this is a very, this is a two dimensional. So this is not 3D quite yet. We're aiming to visualize how it would populate in 3D and whatnot. But right now there's a specialist edge of knowledge and there's a most generalist in the center. So the generalists are in the center and the specialist edge of knowledge across all these blue fields, let's just hypothetically say. Then the green nodes that you see in the circle are your recent email completed with this node. So that's why they're green. But these red, more red nodes are the nodes that you have, it's been a long time since you've had a recent email with this node. Then you can see that the size of the node is size of node equals connection strength to you. So Matt is a big node, so he's a bigger connection. Whereas these little tiny nodes over here and over there and whatnot, less strong of a connection to me. But here's what's interesting is that you can also see how these red bars, these kind of bonds, right? Bars or bonds. If you have a single bar or a bond with two nodes, this is their connection strength to each other. So our connection strength to the node is by their size, but the connection strength of them to each other is by these bars or these bonds. So here's Kim is connected to this question mark. This question mark is closer to some of the neuroscience area. And Kim's got a quad bond for, so it's a strong bond between the nodes. And then if you follow this question mark out, you see that this is where the machine learning model prompts me with new nodes as daily suggestions, showing me nodes I already know well, who can yes to know the intro after I say I'm interested. So meaning this node is a request is an ML models predicting I should connect to it and then it's also showing that Kim's got a quad bond to it so then it's like um, do you want to connect yes or no and then the question would be does Kim get prompted and then select yes or no to introduce Alan to this question mark node and so this is kind of about like the consent question and stuff or should this ML model just predict that Kim should be connecting this node to Alan and then have that be one of her options and that's this option ML model prompts me with five daily suggestions to connect nodes in my network. So this would be what Kim would get. Kim would get one of these, you know, there's these question mark nodes, right? And these question mark nodes would be the ones that, for example, Kim would be getting this, this daily suggestion to connect me to this node. And so she'd get this five daily suggestions, both with high confidence and some low confidence, because on the low confidence, there's gonna be creativity, creative options. So we can see maybe this 20 or 30% confidence connection is actually one that Alan wants. And this is kind of the creativity of the ML model, just like we saw the creativity in some of um, of AlphaGo with playing these new moves in chess and Jeopardy and AlphaStar, et cetera, that they're playing new moves. They're playing some moves that actually have a significant um, creative edge. And so this can be something similar that we learn from that process. And then um, likely lastly to explain here is just that it's also interesting to see down here that the ML model can also prompt these loving check-in emails to red notes, so like Kim, to turn them green. So I can check in with a close friend after six months, et cetera. So we can automate um, a prompt that sends to me, you know, do you wanna check in with Kim? It's been six months, she's red on your, on your note and you can turn her green. And so you can better keep in touch with people this way. You can better not only connect to the prominent nodes that are that that you can connect to, but also connect your friends um, to prominent nodes um, that to other nodes that can help them with their goals. So this has been just a little bit of some of the visualization and the thoughts on my mind around this project. Um, I'm extremely extremely grateful to be working on this. It's super duper fun, and it's just such a blessing. Um, because I love network theory, I love mathematical sociology, um, I love cybernetics, and I love being able to accelerate people's dreams being executed faster by connecting powerful people. I want that to be automated more effectively, and I want us to be able to find our hot 50, all of these nodes, find your hot 50 faster and connect yourself to the important folks, and just to have our data be better working for us. Um, much love, Matt, much love, Joshua. Um, you guys are exciting, and I hope we can, um, you know, build this out and um, get people 
working with this. So just some initial thoughts and let's uh, let's execute, make it happen. Version two will start popping in the LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, as much data as we can into um, to really synthesize the data and a bunch of other cool stuff in version two. Anyway, this is some of the things that I was uh, for now thinking about. Um, I think we can obviously charge people like 30 bucks a month for this service. Um, once they see that they're gaining tremendous value from it, people can totally afford it. People pay 30 bucks a month for superhuman and things of high value. So we can do this and we can scale this and we can look back at this one day and laugh because this is some of the earliest days of building out one of the most important projects of providing other people with value around the world and connecting people. Like we wanna be able to query this graph for neuroscience. We wanna query it for Hong Kong. We wanna query it for generalists as well. All this cool stuff that we can query these graphs for. Um, all right, much love. Thanks everyone.